It's my fault for getting kicked out. I should have been more careful with my actions. But there was a guy in there playing Billy Badass and intimidating everybody. And he was a convict straight out of the pen. And, you know, the shaved head, the goatee, the, the really tough guy thing. And uh, then he tried picking on me. And it didn't go over so well because I didn't care, you know, how many tattoos he had. And, uh, of course, then when it came time for the counselors to question, it was him saying, he hurt me. You know, and so I got kicked out of treatment. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I've learned about tough guys. You know, a lot of times they're not as tough as they, they put on to be as soon as you, anyway. So I got kicked out of treatment. So now, <laughs> now, now not only am I a drug dealer, you know, the feds are watching me the whole time. That's like the DEA and them type, you know, and as, long, as, as well as the local police. They see me get kicked out of treatment for violence. Now not only am I a drug dealer, they got caught with a bunch of guns, now I'm a violent drug dealer. I don't know if that's why the feds decided to pick up my case, but they did. Two days after getting kicked out, my lawyer called and said, guess what? The feds just picked up your case. Now for the exact same crime you're looking at, instead of me getting you six months in, in forced work camp or, or you know, probation, now for the exact same crime, you're looking at 15 to life. It's me and you versus the United States of America. I was like, whoa. I'm kind of kind of, kind of outnumbered there. And... Uh, that's a very sobering experience. That's when I say, whoa, maybe I do need to quit being a meth dealer. Whoa, maybe this whole thing was, you know, how did I get here? Whoa, 15 to life, huh? Uh, you know, uh, and I've been free this whole time because I do have an excellent lawyer. Uh, he kept me free on pretrial. You know, he got me back into treatment in the outpatient program. You know, I've got a cool PO. In my case, it's called a pretrial officer instead of a parole officer. But, uh, you know, he's a federal PO, and he's, he's been very supportive. He helped me pay for outpatient treatment because at this point I'm out of money. You know, here I was, you know, drug trafficker. And, and, and one of the things I want you guys to get when you're counseling with kids is that, you know, I mean, even at the top of my crime spree, my, my you know, drug dealing days, I was living in a duplex in Thurston driving a Toyota Camry. It's a new Camry, but it's still just a Toyota Camry. There was no fancy cars. There's no yacht. No big fancy house on the hill. And I know all the dope dealers in town. And none of them are living the high life. At best, they're living middle class. You know, that's the thing is the only people that really make money selling dope, good money, the big money like you see on TV, are the pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> you know, they're, the, they're really the only ones that make the big money. Otherwise, you might make enough to buy a car, a couple cars, maybe a house, and, you know, maybe have a normal middle class life where you got food, entertainment, vacation. Same thing you get if you graduate from college and get a normal job like Mark. You know, just a normal life. Um, but you've also got to worry about being killed at any time by people that want to come take your stash or your money. You also got to worry about getting shot by the good guys, too, the, the cops, you know, who I don't have anything against. I've never been a cop hater. I never was one of those criminals that said, you know. F the police or whatever, whatever. They got to do their job. I'm glad they caught me because I'm finally clean. You know, I'm coming off a 20-year drug binge, and I'm finally clean. And if it wasn't for those Springfield cops busting me, <laughs> I'd still be using meth, and I'd probably be dead by now. I was using uh, approximately an eight ball to a quarter ounce of 100% pure meth a day when they busted me, every day. I didn't shoot it, but I smoked it. And um, I smoked that stuff like other people chain smoke cigarettes. It didn't even get me high anymore. Now, 100% pure meth, you've got to realize the stuff on the streets is 20% pure. So to, to use, I mean, so multiply what I was using by five, if you're talking about just normal meth. I mean, I was using a tremendous amount of meth every day. If I wasn't such a big, happy, robust guy, is what my lawyer always said. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think I'm all that. But if I wasn't so healthy, it probably would have killed me. Um, I just, I'm just lucky, you know. Call it the hand of God, call it whatever. I'm very lucky to be alive. I used a lot, a lot, a lot of meth. And uh, that's another thing I want to get through to you guys. If I can get clean, anybody can. Nobody's used more meth than me. I've used an outrageous amount of meth, 100% pure. I think what saved my life is that I never did go to the vein. A lot of my friends did. A lot of them are worse than dead. You know, they're just sucked up. They're stealing from their friends and family. You know, the girls do sexual favors for drugs. It's an ugly ugly world out there. Um, and uh, when I get out of prison, I hope to be sitting in this classroom because I'd kind of like to be a drug counselor too. Um, you know, my lawyer was able, okay, so about three months ago, 
the United States District Attorney came to my lawyer and said, look, you know, we appreciate that Rob's done a year's worth of treatment. I did inpatient, got kicked out after five weeks, but I still, that was the most valuable part of my treatment was that inpatient. Then I did, I went back to three months of outpatient. Then I did six months of aftercare. And throughout this whole thing, I've probably done 500 12-step meetings. Um, it's just what I do now. Um, I go speak at high schools. I remembered Mark. I saw his class the other day when I was flipped through the TV. I was like, hey, maybe I can go talk to his kids. And then I started talking to him. I realized you guys aren't a bunch of kids. You guys are grown-ups. And, uh, and I was like, well, I don't know. You know, I was like, can we do a non-televised class? And he's like, no, all I got is TV. I was like, yeah. I was like, well, okay. You know, because maybe I can get you guys something that will help you detour the people you're going to, you know, be, be helping as drug counselors. Maybe if you tell them, you know, I know a guy that was a drug dealer that got involved with the commercial side of drugs. First offense, spotless record. My lawyer was able to get it down to eight years. Eight years in the federal prison system. I leave on the 5th. I go knock on the door and ask them if they got my bed. I don't know. I just show up, you know, and they take me in. And that's what I do for the next eight years. I got to go to prison. It sucks. But if me going to prison and being very vocal about the fact that even on a first offense, you go to prison for that long, is going to help some young high school kids or some youngsters or somebody not get involved with this poison, then cool. You know, I wish I would have listened closer when he came to my school. You know, I'm the kid that got up when he said, what's this part of marijuana that we smoke? I was like, buds! Buds. He's like, yes, we have a winner. The buds. <laughs> He's probably thinking, yes, we have a loser. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's how I met Mark. Uh, well, what was the rest of the conversation? You remember that? I don't. Okay. I don't. Do you? Sure. I probably talked about how much I knew about drugs, and I don't know. Uh, I always thought it was cool my whole life being the guy that could get the coke or the weed or the speed, or thought I was connected. You know, that's stupid. Um, you know, um, kind of gearing this different. I've never talked to a bunch of grown-ups about this stuff, and you guys are obviously probably not going to become drug addicts if you're going to school to become drug counselors. But, you know, when I was here, I didn't plan on being a drug addict either, so be careful. Stuff sneaks right up on you. You know, I, didn't, I had no idea. You know, it was always just a weekend thing. I was always going to be able to stop, but it could happen to each one of you. Uh, sneaks right up on you. And so... I'm going to prison for eight years because of what I've done to this community, and I deserve it. I'll probably never be able to make up for all the wrong I've done. I flooded this community with meth, and that stuff is poison. And I can only speak for myself. I don't care what anybody else does. If anybody else wants to sell drugs, that's fine. That's their business, not mine. You know, um, I'm, not, I'm not here to get myself killed. You know, I'm not here to talk about other people's drug dealing. I'm here to just talk about mine. And I know I was wrong for what I did, and I can only really claim that. Um, so, go to prison. When I get out, hopefully I'll become a drug counselor. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just do it for fun. I don't know. But I'm going to be involved with this whole recovery and treatment stuff for the rest of my life because it's what I do now. You know, it's, it's, my, new, it's my new addiction, recovery. And, uh, you know, maybe write a book while I'm in the pen or something. I don't know. Any questions? Well, it's a good way. It's um, a constant reinforcement. Absolutely. Um, the, you know, what, what's cool about treatment is cool or not cool or whatever. It costs about five grand to go. Um, there's a program out there that's free if you're ready to make the change. What treatment does is it gets you ready for recovery, which is the 12 steps. You know, um, it's about attraction, not promotion. We're supposed to stay anonymous at the level of press, radio, and films. That's our tradition. But since this is a classroom, you know, I don't think this is going to make prime time. So I can say that it's really about the 12 step. You know, and so, so if I do it as a, as, a, as a profession, that's great. I might do that. But if not, I'll at least do it at a volunteer level at the sponsoring people in, in the different 12 step programs. Has your appearance changed physically or anything since? Um, Do you, you notice anything different? Well, you know. I used drugs for so long, um, and I had pretty much an unlimited supply of meth. So I used it so long, it didn't affect me the way it affects people. Because at, at earlier stages of my addiction, in my early 20s, I had to go around with meth. And it made me really skinny, eyeballs sucked up, uh, you know, 
talk fast, can't sleep, can't eat. 